I don't even really know where to start. So I'm just going to let you start and what you're... <laughs> so we, we drop the green flag and they take off. And the next thing you know, we've got cars just dropping like flies, going backwards, some cars going forward. And we knew that that qualifying, it all started in qualifying because mm-hmm. uh, we had Ross Chastain qualify last. Chris Busher was was in the back. Carson Hosevar, you know, tried to tried to spin out. And every time somebody would try to push the car any faster than than it was capable of going, it, they would get loose into three, they'd get loose into one, they'd step out. And uh, second lap wasn't wasn't very good. So qualifying was very strange to start the weekend. So it had the field really mm-hmm. mixed up. So we thought at the beginning of the race, and there's going to be a lot of people coming and going. Uh, there's a lot of good cars in the back. Uh, but we got to lap 30 and there were, there were, but we had big problems um, <laughs> and the big problems. We had with the big way problems. That, we had big problems with the way that cars were handling. And so, um, you know, the, the first caution came out and everybody goes into pit and the tires are wore out, which we had been informed that the right side tires in practice had been completely worn out. And a lot of guys really confused after practice. Chase Elliott gave probably the best interview uh, after practice, just talking about how confusing practice was and didn't really know what to think of this car. Uh, group A and B were drastically different in speed and in the way that the cars would fall off. We're talking like four tenths different with the fast laps comparable uh, in, the, in the way that they fell off. So uh, we get through qualifying and that first run was like, wow, that was, that, maybe, maybe it'll get better as, as they lay some rubber down, but it didn't, it didn't get better the second run either. So I, I, I got to give credit to the teams, though, because after the second run, it was like, hey, we got to do something different here. And, and really, after the, after the third set of tires that they put on, they only had eight sets of tires plus their qualifying tires. So um, they knew immediately, we, we have a tire wear issue that we weren't prepared for. We have to change the way that we're driving, the lap times and the pace. And then we started to see a good old-fashioned late model stock race uh, <laughs> that yeah. you had to pace yourself to take care of your tires and do the things that you needed to, to make sure that you could go, go far enough because really what was happening in the first half of the race was they were racing from who was going to be the first caution. You just didn't want to be the first caution. So there was a sense of survival that you had to instill in your mindset and you had to, you had to back that pace up. So we saw the Gibbs cars back, um, you know, back the pace up to like 17 flats, uh, which is in my mind, super slow for, Mm -hmm. for a Bristol lap time. But all of a sudden, we had these everybody backing up. Well, everybody's like, well, this is a good chance to get track position. So we had guys driving, passing a bunch of cars, and they'd get to the front. And, and then the other guys would be like, well, I want that track position. And, and just like a, like a Cars Tour late-mall stock race. And, and so a lot of these guys had done that. And as we got towards the end of the race, the, the Gibbs cars picked up the pace and were able to, they had everybody beat uh, with, with the way that their cars were handling. They were just better than everybody else, and they completely controlled the race. So the story, the big story from this race, of course, was the tire management and the veterans prevailed. I mean, we saw a lot of strength from Ty Gibbs, but he probably has never experienced something yeah. quite like that before. Right. And so the veterans, of course, rose to the occasion with yeah. Ben Hamlin winning. Yeah. So I think, you know, it comes down to experience a little bit. Obviously, at this level, Ty's never had to do that. He's won plenty of late model races so it's not like he's not used to doing it just not in a long time Mm -hmm. like this and it kind of fell right into to denny's wheelhouse but i will say martin triggs jr was was chomping at the bit Mm -hmm. like the amount of pressure that martin was putting on denny at the at the end and then it looked like an old uh cup race from bristol where like traffic's in the way yeah and they they're (laughs) double filed there's nowhere to go and i really felt like the move of the race and Kevin, you let me know what you think here. But I felt like the move of the race was Bubba getting the tap down the backstretch from Denny on the top. Because it was Ross Chastain inside of Bubba, and it was Martin Trix inside of Denny. And they get down into three, and Bubba moves up the hill mm-hmm. and allows Denny to go. And then he gaps him by like, gaps Martin by like six car lengths. Yeah. And he never could get back. Like, I feel like if Martin could have stayed there, it would have been maybe a different finish. But because he couldn't apply that pressure anymore— Denny was kind of able to skirt away. Yeah, he he Denny came out of the pits at, at the green flag stop a little bit ahead, and then there were two or three of those instances where the traffic held him up when those side-by-side instances where Martin would catch back up. But I still think Denny had a better car mm-hmm. and was able to mm-hmm. maneuver. They had definitely caught up right there uh, because of those cars being side-by-side. Um, and Denny just gave the bumper to Bubba and said, hey, man, 
We're racing for the win. I'm I'm lapping you. Get out of the way. I own this thing. I <laughs> own you to Get out of the way. Help me out, bub. Yeah, that's right. And so um, those the 11 car, they did a great job of adjusting on their car. And mm -hmm. at the beginning of the race, it wasn't as good as it was in the middle and the end. And it just kept getting better. And then once that strategy came into play of, of how hard to run your car and knowing how hard to run your car, uh, we heard Chris Gabehart and Denny talk about that uh, once on, on the radio and, and just, hey, we got we to gotta take care of it. We got to pace ourselves. And that fell right into Denny's wheelhouse. Um, you know, Martin did a great job too. But I think when you look at, I mean, Denny grew up racing at Southside Speedway and, and having to yep. take care of the tires and a lot of racetracks in the Southeast like that. Uh, that's the style of race that a Denny Hamlin, a Josh Berry, um, Ty Gibbs raced a lot of late model stocks. Uh, there were, there's a lot of guys that have done that around here. And that was exactly, exactly the way that it, that it worked out. As you were watching it, did you kind of wish you were back in the car for a second? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. He said, he says, I didn't. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> no. But you probably would have prevailed with that. It probably would have been a pretty good day, uh, but you never know. And, and if your car is off on days like that, it's miserable mm -hmm. uh, because, because you just, you're getting lapped and, and you can't really figure out anything that, that makes it better. So, and when you have a race like that, that you're unprepared for, it frustrates you because mm -hmm. you, you have a plan, you go to the simulator, you put all this thought into what you think is going to happen. And then it's a 180 degrees of, of what you'd planned for. Uh -huh. And that's the frustrating part for the drivers. For us, it was great. And I think when the drivers go back and they really think about a lot of the meetings that we've had with Goodyear, a lot of the meetings that we've had with NASCAR, we have asked for the tires to wear out to the cords. Sure, this was extreme. But, this was definitely extreme. And I don't know, uh, as we saw with, with Goodyear in the media center talking through what was happening, I really think they were on damage. They thought they were on damage control. This might be one of the best accidents that's ever happened in a sport. Seriously. Because what happened at Bristol, if we went back today, the teams would adapt and adjust. They'd change the camber. They'd change the toe. They'd change their setup. They would have a much different approach to how they set up their car when they, when they go back to race. And I think from the driver's standpoint and the sports standpoint, this is exactly what we've wanted and asked for. I just hope we know how we got here. That's, right. that's my yeah. big concern. Is <laughs> yeah. We didn't expect to be here and here we are, but this is maybe, a, as Brad Keselowski said, this might've been a 10 on the tire wear scale. Maybe we need to back it down to an eight, but I think you'd back it down probably to an eight, just going there again, knowing what to expect. Yeah. So my vote is we make the tires right now and we lock them in the in the shed at Bristol and we go back there for the fall. Bolt them back because up. Because they're, they're going to automatically be better. And yeah. I, I love the fact that the tires wear out and you, your setup matters. We didn't hear anything about an aero push. Nope. Nothing. There was, there was not one word about aero push and aerodynamics and short track packages or whatever the, whatever the situation was. All we heard about is... I need to do, my car needs to handle better. My tires are wore out. I, I went too fast. There were, there were you had options. Yep. And I, I love that about what we just saw. I sure. also loved what uh, Chris Gapehart, crew chief, of course, for Denny Hamlin was saying, like, this is sport. This is supposed to be hard. And he was like very adamant about the fact he didn't want people criticizing Goodyear, that this, he actually welcomed this challenge. And that makes it even more interesting for the crew chiefs, the drivers. Everyone had their work cut out for them with this situation unfolding. Yeah. You, I mean, that's what we, we do this for, to compete and to try and be better than each other. Now, maybe you didn't know what was happening, but <laughs> when, it rain, when it rains, you don't expect that uh, part of it either. You know what I mean? And you just do what you got to do to get the best finish of the day. And to your point, when when uh, Brad Kozlowski was talking to Bob Pockers as Bob was trying to run backwards and do his interview at the same time, he was like, yeah, it was like, you know, some races we have, the tires are like a one or a two in the matter category. I personally feel like if it's more of an eight or a nine, like all the time, then the drivers and the teams are going to adjust. Right. Then it's more fun for us to watch rather than the tires never mattering and maybe there's no pit stops and then that changes the strategy. Um, and as a driver, I feel like at that level, it makes it more entertaining. Well, the other thing that I like about this scenario is how NASCAR handled it. Yeah. We knew 100 laps in that we, we were short on We tires. had a problem. And Elton Sawyer was in our booth and he says, hey, not for air, but here, here's, here's our plan. And you could see the little... Ants starting to scurry around from the from the Goodyear building and, and tires started moving. And 
you know, NASCAR took their time and making sure the racetrack track was clean and, and everything for the first couple of stages. But when they gave out that extra set of tires, it's like, all right, boys and girls, you, you know exactly what you have. The race is on to the end of the race. You've got enough tires. If your tires are bald, come on in the pits. You've got plenty, plenty of sets to put on to get you to the end of the race and you need to manage it. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.